Yeah. Okay, so my one's a bit different, a bit of a different take on community. Um, Colin, can we ready? I think Thank you. Yeah, my one's a bit different. Instead of looking at student communities or teaching and learning communities, my, my one's looking at um, a new kind of community for us as learning technologists um, in the uh, performing arts conservatoire sector sorry this is a as you might tell by the hastily crossed out alt c 2022 this is a thing i i did there and i you know kind of you know when we were looking for presentations i kind of said bashly said i do this so um I'm trying to remember what i said at that meeting but hey um yeah let's you can get on to there so me yeah learning technologist in higher education with over 27 years experience mixture of hands-on management roles in small specialist and larger unis. And I joined the Guildhall School as their sole, the learning technologist. It has Moodle, it's my problem, right? Um, in July, 2021, and I'm still there. <laughs> Working out of the wig workshop, if anybody wants to know. Um, but yes, and I'm still making the business case for an additional person. Not got there yet, but I'll get there. Um, okay, so performing arts conservatoires, um, there's a bit of a difference of approach in how conservatoires conceive their delivery of teaching and learning. Two definitions there, one from Conservatoires UK and the other from UCAS. And I think the bit that I would pick out as being really important is that kind of last bit from Conservatoires UK where it says, um, you know, so dance, acting, instrumental or vocal performance. Um, they are taught at both universities and conservatoires, but as you'd expect, the conservatoire emphasis is more on the pra practical and vocational aspects of that performance, underpinned um, through academic coursework and other things that um, students are you know, academically required to do and deliver. Um, but, you know, essentially it's, uh, you know, refining their craft, becoming the world's next best, uh, you know, leading soprano or whatever it is that we, we happen to be training them in. Um, so thinking about our peers' networks as learning technologists, then what have we got? Well, we've got things like uh, early <coughs> career learning technology group on LinkedIn, that's at one end of the experience spectrum. At the other end, we've got the kind of heads of e-learning forum um, for people that are fairly senior kind of leadership role. Uh, we've also got things around particular technologies. So there's a Pimocto user group, there's an instructor community for those people that use Canvas, who hiss. Um, sorry, I used it for a year in one place and ran away screaming. Um, and also Moodle Moot for anybody that uses Moodle. Um, and there's the Moodle user group in, in London. We've also got the alt groups. I don't need to talk about those because we are one of them here in this room. There's also other groups like, uh, you know, the, the Learning Network and things like that. But um, if I was to think about specifically what there is in the conservatoire sector, I joined it, you know, I joined a conservatoire, you know, when I did, looked around for my peers and thought, oh, right, there are other places out there. Who's talking to anyone? There are a couple of JISC mail lists. Um, one I found for e-learning and music and dance and things like that. And there were two people on the list, one of whom worked at another conservatoire in London and the other guy was in the room next door. And it was quite obvious that they weren't really talking to each other. So I just thought, you know, okay, how do I find out what's going on in this in this sector that I haven't really worked in officially uh, before? So I'll skip over the bit about learning technologies and leadership because that was the previous presentation. But um, so I did, I decided to try and kind of pull together my own network of 
people in similar similar sectors, you know, similar institutions to me. So I came up with this thing called Inside the Digital Conservatoire. Um, and it was hastily convened uh, to try and establish a network of peers to share practice between institutions, find out what's going on elsewhere. You know, you kind of, you land in a place and you want to look, map the landscape, don't you? Where, where do you fit in with your peers? So, um, you know, I kind of had a chat with an old mate of mine, Julian, who Elizabeth used to work with as well. And he said, yes, he, he would be um, the kind of chair of the first meeting as an impartial person to kind of steer the discussion, ask the question without me setting, necessarily setting the agenda. Um, and I basically put out posts on LinkedIn and just mail lists and, you know, found a bunch of people from places that wanted to come and share and talk and discuss. And um, yeah, so we convened an online meeting with three major questions, I think, that we wanted to get a sense of. Um, what are the, the kind of key technologies that are used in, in the conservatoire sectors? Um, what's worked and what hasn't? Um, major challenges of the past two years. I mean, we've all got them, right? Uh, you know, past three years now, because, and um, what do we think the future of ed tech looks like in the conservative sector? So a bit of looking back, a bit of thinking, this is where we are, a bit of thinking ahead. So, as I said, we convened the meeting and there it is. Um, it took place a year ago today, so I could be somewhere else in an entirely different space with an entirely different people. But um, yeah, so we had people from or College of Music, Oxford University, Cambridge, um, Morley College, um, and a few other other people um, from other places. And unfortunately, I didn't remember to uh, take the screenshot right at the beginning when we had more people there, but there's a, there's a, a few of us there anyway. So um, it was an online meeting, scheduled for an hour, lasted a couple of hours. We, we had a lot to discuss, you know, we, we think. So finally, there's, there's actually more of us out here than we, we maybe realized and thought, actually, we should, we should be talking to each other. We should be sharing what's going on in our kind of slightly crazy, world of, you know, working out of strange rooms that nobody thought the learning technology should ever be in, you know. I mean, I started day one in my, in my job and uh, the first thing I had to do was to you know, move a, loop, a load of opera costumes so I could actually sit um, somewhere in a seat. And, you know, I turned up and there was somebody put on, you know, the mask for the Queen of the Night on the top of my monitor. I thought, no, thank you, this won't do. Um, because, you know, it's just not my style. Um, so there it is, there it was, and it was all good, I think. It led to a couple of outputs. Um, one, the one on the left there, I did a bit of a, a blog post thingy on our intranet because we're quite small and very specialist and very quirky in the way we do things. Um, yeah, the only way you really publicize anything at the Guildhall School is via my Guildhall. Um, principal read it, that's good. And the other thing I've, I've done, which is still awaiting publication, is I, I wrote a chapter in a special uh, edition of a publication for CEDA about uh, digital technologies and practices for online teaching and learning in the sector. Um, so I've got a few things to come out of it. And a lot of what happened in that meeting, voices from the community, as it were, is reflected in that, in that publication. Um, so that's quite uh, an interesting thing to do. And um, my line manager read that post about it and read a draft of it and said, why has no one ever done this kind of stuff before? Just because no one's ever thought about doing it, really, I guess. And I thought, well, 
you know, maybe we need to find out what's happening elsewhere and we need to work out what's going on and what we could be doing. But, you know, crucially, what are other places doing that we could also do with one learning technologist in a week workshop? And we did. So um, it's um, something I think that potentially could have a bit of leadership potential for the conservatoire sector if we took it further. Um, so doing things like, you know, the regular diorite meetings and, you know, setting things up and getting some actual community, uh, you know, leadership in terms of, you know, this is what we want. This is, you know, the things that we think we need to focus on that are specific to our areas and disciplines and, you know, actually what we could do. What, what's happened in the year since that first meeting took place is we've had a few smaller cluster meetings where I've gone out and actually met people. Yay, that's always good, isn't it? Um, but, you know, um, finding out more specific stuff around what they're doing with, you know, specific aspects of how they're uh, doing, you know, quite niche things for a particular group of students. So, um, one of the meetings I had recently was with uh, Royal College of Music, where we were talking around, you know, actually how they're delivering uh, opera, opera training online and uh, things like that, working with uh, students in a studio, uh, maybe with an accompanist also there, but having it being critiqued as it's happening by people online. So all of that kind of thing that we, we discussed. Um, and that's kind of it, really. But um, yeah, it's just the first step, initial starting point in terms of trying to find out, you know, kind of who the figures are, what's going on, where it could go from, from here on. And I think it's really a case of, you know, making those contacts, maintaining them, nurturing them, and kind of going, okay, this is what is the crucial thing for us as a, as a kind of small subsector of the HE community and working with that and sharing ideas and, and that's more difficult for another. Okay, I'll leave I'll leave it there actually. Okay, so thank you. I have a really interesting perspective. Can we please thank Kevin? <laughs> If anybody apologies, I've been locked out of the Zoom, so I lost the chat. Is there anything back in the Zoom that any questions to raise? Uh, just that it would be nice to be surrounded by costumes and masks. <laughs> <laughs> you can always come and work with me <laughs> once I get that, that business case approved. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have you all day, any use, this kind of thing? Right. Um, good question. We've got quite a bit of um, interest in joining Guild HE at uh, Guild Hall at the minute, which is quite quite fascinating because uh, that's really come from our access and participation team who sit on the other side of the week workshop from me. Um, seriously, they do. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, it's something that I think, you know, yeah, it's one of the things that maybe places like us need to get better at is being plugged in with some of those sector organisations that can actually uh, join us into those conversations at a more senior level, effectively. Um, and I think maybe it's a bit of, um, a bit of, you know, something that we need to do better. Because maybe a lot of conservative sector places haven't really been a large part of, you know, the wide ranging community. Um, so mm -hmm. needs to do a bit better. And that was in a really small specialist place that focused on the construction people here, so I can feel your loneliness on it. Um, but I was a bit disappointed that Guild H didn't really, because you know it's just full of subjects which are like you can't do that online, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think more voices within that sector organisation would be really good. I think it's something we're we're seriously looking at as an organisation. Um, you know, how we you know, position ourselves, where, you know, what would be the best affiliations to have and, and how we get that forward. But yeah, it's on the agenda, I know. Um, 